Hi, it's me again, and I'm going to be really good at this because I'm doing this multiple times, and this time I'm for sure going to get it right. And today we're going to talk all about something very, very fascinating buffers. Like the buffering on this uh, computer is terrible, but that's not the kind of buffering we're going to talk about. And we're not going to talk about this guy either because, well, that's just me doodling in my sketchbook or my notebook actually for class and coloring it in later. I did it before class. Don't do it in class. It's bad. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try and make this really quick if I can. I want to uh, see what happens when you put a strong acid into a buffer solution. But to do that, I'm just going to do a little bit of review first so that you have, have the concepts down. Uh, here's what I want to do first. Get my uh, pen here ready. Okay, I want to look at a solution that is... A uh, solution that is, uh, oh, come on now. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get there. All right, there we go. Uh, 0 0.175 molars of acetic acid. And uh, acetic acid has an acid constant that I found on Wikipedia. I actually had to do a little bit of calculation to get here from a different number, the pKa value that they gave me. But anyway, it's 1.74 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the buffer solution we're going to look at in a minute would be just the conjugate base of acetic acid. Okay, And we can see that just in this little piece here, right, from the CH3CO2 over. It's just missing the H, right? So it's the conjugate base. Anyway, we're going to mix that uh, together and find out what the pH is. But first I want to see what would the pH be if it's just the acetic acid all by itself mixed into water. So let's try it out. Let's say if I have uh, the acid only added to water. I'm going to run a rice table. Here's my reaction. Okay. It's going to be the acetic acid plus water will yield the conjugate base and H3O+. Plus. So what that's going to look like in my initial concentration is 0 0.175 molar of the uh, of the acid. Okay, And the water, uh, I'm not really going to calculate here because it's liquid. We're only going to pay attention to the aqueous ones. Over here I have nothing to begin with and I have nothing to begin with uh, on the hydronium or the base. So what will happen as soon as the reaction is completed is I'll have lost X amount of the original acid. Again, we don't care too much about the water. It's not really going to affect our calculations here. This is going to increase by a certain concentration. Okay? and so will the hydronium. And if I want to calculate the pH of this, of course, it's that last bit that's most important to me. So when I add all these together, I end up with something that looks like this. Okay, uh, That's funny. I thought I had something written out there. Let me fix that right now. There should be an X there too, right? In fact, let's just because I want to be consistent in my design, because it matters, right? Consistency matters. Or an anal retentive artist, which I sort of am, I guess. Okay, anyway, uh, these numbers are the ones I'm going to use with my acid constant for acetic acid to come up with the pH for the solution just of acetic acid. We're ignoring for now this uh, sodium uh, acetate. So I'm going to come down here and say my acid constant, Ka, is equal to x squared, because I've got the x here and I've got the x here, over the concentration at the end of the uh, rela uh, reaction, not the rela relaxation. Gosh, I need to relax my tongue. Okay. Anyway, the concentration when I hit equilibri equilibrium is going to be this squared over this, right? Now, I could solve this with a qu uh, quadratic formula, but really I just want to get an approximation because it's going to be so close anyway doesn't matter. So I'm going to say that my acid constant is approximately equal to x squared over 0 0.175, uh, which is valid so long as my value for x is less than 5% of the value of the original concentration. Okay, well, I did the math, and we take the negative, well, we solve for x first, okay, so we take the square root of, uh, well, you know how to solve for x if you're this far, okay, and I get 1.74 times 10 to the negative third power, right? Just by multiplying by the 1 point, or 0 0.175 times this square root, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Now I take the negative log of this concentration. Why? Well, because this concentration here, yeah, I like that. Come on now. Yeah, there we go. Is this right? My hydronium. Okay. So negative log of that gives me the pH, which is going to be equal to 2.758. Okay. So far, so good. That's what I do for the uh, just you know finding out the pH of the acetic acid in water only. Okay. Well, let's go a little bit further here and see uh, what would happen if I combine now that sodium acetate with my acetic acid. Okay. Remember my pH before because that'll be interesting when we compare it here in a second. Okay. So with both I'm going to run my uh, reaction again I'm gonna run my rice table right and not much should change really and I'll explain why in just a second here but I'm gonna have my acetic acid I'm gonna combine it with water and it's gonna yield my conjugate base once again right and my hydronium and you might ask yourself well what happened to the sodium ion well it's not really gonna recombine to form sodium hydroxide. Okay, and why do we know that? Well, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It's one of the lists you're supposed to memorize, and uh, it, it's not strong enough by itself to combine with the hydroxides in the water and, and make a strong base. Won't happen, okay? Because water is strong enough to dissociate it. So, same as before, we're going to start out with our initial concentrations, and here they are. Okay, 0 0.175 moles per liter or molars, right? And uh, our concentration here from the sodium acetate is also going to be 0 0.175, okay? And for our purposes, this is going to be close enough to zero that we can treat it as such. And the change in the reaction, and I'm dealing with, uh, I'm dealing with moles here, actually, this time. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm dealing with concentrations because this is one liter, we'll assume, okay? So this is going to lose X when the reaction runs to uh, equilibrium. This one here is going to gain X, and this one will also gain X. So we write the whole thing out here, right? And uh, we'll sum them together. But something you need to notice right away is that the concentrations of both of these are the same, right? And this is the conjugate base of this acid, and that means we're dealing with a buffer, okay? All right, so adding them together, we get this is the concentration of my uh, reactants. This is, well, when I multiply these together, this will give me the concentration of my product, right? And when I have products and I have reactants, I can use my acid constant to solve for the concentration of hydronium ions, which is why we're here in the first place. So here we go, let's do it. This is my acid constant from before, same as up top here. And that's going to be equal to the 0 0.175 plus x times x. I bet you, you can tell what's going to happen here in a minute. Okay, this is my reactants, products over reactants. Okay, and because x is small, I can do an x is small approximation. We can verify that x is small, of course, later on if we want to. I'll show you that. Okay, so x, uh, here we go. Come on now. I know it's over here somewhere. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so. My acid constant is approximately equal to 0.175x. Okay, why is that? Because I'm ignoring that x and the 0.175 plus x, but I'm keeping the other one. Okay, And that's going to be all over 0.175. Hey, that's convenient because that comes out to be 1. So actually, x in this case is equal to 1.74 times 10 to the negative fifth, which, uh, hey, that's that's really convenient. Okay, what is, what is that number? That's our concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, now If I'd drawn that better, actually, there'd be a little uh, bracket complete over there, but I'm not worried about it for right now. So anyway, how do I know that that's a valid approximation? Because I'm going to take, and I goofed this up earlier, but I'm going to take the 1.74 times 10 to the negative fifth and divide it by the original concentration of the acid, multiply that by 100 to get the percentage, and it's really teeny. That's less than 5%, 5% uh, so we can go with that. As long as X is a lot less than the original concentration of the acid, uh, then that uh, approximation will be valid. 
Okay. Now there's an easier way to do this, especially when you're dealing with buffer solutions, because uh, you can use the Henderson-Hassel bulk uh, equation, and it'll look something like, oh, well, actually, let's solve first for the pH. We have hydronium. It should be easy now, right? We say pH is equal to the negative log of, uh, of my uh, hydronium concentration, or my hydrogen ion concentration, right? And that should give us a positive number when we're done, which will be 4.76. That's our pH. It's less than 7, so we know it's acidic, which you should expect because you added acid to, uh, to the solution. That should make it more acidic. All right, or well, actually, excuse me, I've got a conjugate base. It'll be less acidic than the original one. Okay, from there, uh, let's let's just compare what we get with the uh, henderson hasselbalch equation. I always hear Hasselbach or Hasselbach, but uh, there's an L in there. I just can't seem to ignore it. Okay, so the pH here is going to be equal to, by, by henderson hasselbach uh, negative log of 1.74 times 10 to the negative fifth. This is the pKa value. It works the same way as pH. We're just saying the negative log of the Ka value, or the acid constant. Now I'm going to add that to the logarithm of the concentration of my base over the concentration of my acid. Right? Those we had provided before, and this works out to be pretty easy because what's the log of 1? 0. Okay, so this just comes straight down here, and ta-da, our pH is 4.76, and we can ignore this zero over here, of course. That gets us to the point of where we know what the pH of the solution is. What we need now is to see what happens in a buffer when you add something to it, and this is actually pretty easy, so let me just uh, turn this down. I'm going to want the numbers still, but not quite so obviously. All right. Here goes. So um, I'm going to add a strong acid to this buffer solution. So if I can get everything lined up here. So the strong acid I want to uh, bring in is going to be uh, 0.035 moles. Notice I didn't say molars here, and that's be careful with this, okay? Uh, of hydrobromic acid to one liter of the solution we just barely mapped out, the one you can kind of see here faded out, okay? And I left that there for a reason, you'll see. We, we could go through and calculate this using the original formula, but it's easier if you think of it in terms of the acid, okay, uh, reacting to form its conjugate base and the uh, conjugate, well, that's not a conjugate, excuse me, I shouldn't be talking in terms of conjugates here. Just imagine breaking into the cation and the anion, and, and you're professor with a PhD over my practicing this for the first time this year will probably tell you this better than I will but anyway it doesn't matter uh, the thing I want to consider at this point is a stoichiometry and and what happens when I put this strong acid into my buffer solution is that the hydrogen bromide is going to be completely consumed okay so let's start out and see what would happen at the very beginning of the reaction what's our picture what are, what are we looking at here okay. well it's going to be the same concentration we had before, right, of the of the acid, before I put anything in it. And I've got the sodium acetate in there, so this will be here, and, and this will be, well, we'll see here in a minute, but this, right now this is 0 0.035, and, ah, good grief. Getting kind of twitchy there. All right. This is what the reaction looks like to begin with. Okay, so this is, uh, over here we're seeing the amount to begin with before the reaction actually takes place. This 0.035 is the HCl before it starts to move to equal equilibrium. So the change is going to look like this. I'm adding it, okay, here, and that, well, we ignore the water up from before, is going to increase, or excuse me, that's going to decrease the amount of conjugate base, right? This acid the hydrobromic acid is going to be absorbed by the base and cancel out, okay? and that's going to cause also a decrease over here okay? in uh, in our hydronium what, when they when they recombine. And now I'm going to go add them together as you're familiar with already. Okay, doing the math. We're getting moles here, right? Now it doesn't matter right now because we're dealing with moles per liter. Okay. 
So having all three of these things present, my hydrobromic acid uh, over here on the right hand side, right, and uh, the sodium acetate is the A minus and the uh, and the uh, acetic acid is a 0 0.175. So that's where all these top numbers are coming from. And then uh, when I add them together, I see a cancellation of uh, the uh, hydronium that was there, and I end up with these two numbers. The 0 0.210 is the product side, and we're just going to go back and we're going to say that, uh, well, we're going to solve it the same way we just did before. Okay? So using Henderson Hasselbalch again uh, this time because you know we don't want to waste all that time and solve it out the long way with rice, though you could and you'd be more assured of your answer. Okay. We're going to say that the pK is equal to the pKa, which is the negative log of the acid constant, plus the logarithm of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. So let's just plug in our numbers and solve. I've got pH is equal to the negative log of, well we had that number given to us, right? Wikipedia, thank you very much and uh, we solve for this number so these are our concentrations from up in our table before right? and now uh, let's just simplify so pH is going to be equal to 4.761 we had that from earlier I believe and then we'll subtract the logarithm uh, here and that's really adding the negative right these, these two need to be added and that gives us a value of 4.583 and that's it. Now you know what happens when you add a strong acid, okay, uh, when you add a strong acid to a buffer solution. Now if you look up above you, you would see that, uh, oh let's see, what was our original pH? Looks like, well if it was just the acid it was 2.758, something like that. Uh, we calculated earlier that the uh, that it was, uh, oh, let me see if I can remember, it was 4.76, I think, right? 4.76. This was the pH of just the buffer solution itself, and you can see that even though I added a really strong acid, like hydromic acid, I ended up with not a very big change between the two, and that's what a buffer gives you. Hope that helps. It helped me. See you next time.